Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is how you turn a Celtic knot. Celtic knots, or Celtic knots, depending on how it's most commonly pronounced where you live, are decorative designs that were featured extensively throughout Bronze Age European art. And they're still pretty popular today. There are countless forms, all featuring interlacing patterns that look like a fancy knot. Today, we're going to make a relatively simple one using a process that I learned from master woodworker Charles Neal. You can use these techniques on any turned object, from large bowls and vases to small things like pens. Today, we're going to make a medium-sized object, a rolling pin. The key to the entire process is a little bit of patience and a simple table saw sled. The sled holds your stock, which in this case is a piece of five-quarter mahogany, at an angle of somewhere between 20 to 30 degrees to the blade as you cut it. If you're working with really thick stock, such as a big bowl blank, then you might want to use a bandsaw to make your cut, but you can still use a similar sled. Make your cut smoothly and carefully. You want flat surfaces and you do not want any scorching. Take your workpiece back to the bench and then laminate a piece of quarter inch thick wood of contrasting color, such as this maple, into the curve that you just cut. Use plenty of glue. Work it into the end grain with a brush or your finger. That end grain will soak up a lot of it, so don't spare that yellow stuff. The real challenge here is clamping everything together so that it can dry. It's important that the workpiece be straight once you've got it clamped up. So take a wooden cleat that you've coated with wax or clear packaging tape so it won't stick to the glue, and put that on the bottom to help keep it straight as you clamp it. A long clamp from end to end and a pair of clamps in the center should be sufficient if you balance the pressure between them. Your goal is to have a nice straight flat glue up where the points on the darker wood, in this case the mahogany, align with each other and no gaps in the seams. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of keeping your workpiece straight and flat once it's clamped together. If it won't lay flat on the bench once it's clamped up, it's not going to work. Take off the clamps and do it again. After the glue dries for about an hour or so, you can remove the clamps and then use a bandsaw to trim away any of the excess maple piece that's sticking out the sides. You may even use a sander to be sure none of that maple protrudes from the side of the glue up because you want it to lay flat on the sled so that you can make another cut. We're going to repeat that cutting process three more times. Each time we're going to change the angle of the cut by rolling the workpiece on the sled. So for this second time, I'm just going to make a cut in the opposite direction so it forms an X across that maple that I already laminated in. Then I'm going to go back after the next piece of maple is laminated and I'm going to make a third cut. But this time the workpiece is laying on its side. Then after another piece of maple is dry, I go back and I make a fourth cut so now I have an X on that face. When you're done, you're going to have four pieces of maple inlaid in your mahogany or whatever dark wood you're using so that you have an X on all four faces of the workpiece. Now each time we laminated in a piece of that maple, we let the glue dry for about an hour. And that was enough for this purpose, but we really want it to cure before we do our turning, so let it dry overnight. The first step of the turning is to get everything round. I used a carbide roughing tool for that. Then you have to begin thinking about the proper diameter. Good size for a traditional rolling pin is about two inches. So I used a parting tool and a pair of calipers so that I could cut some grooves down the length of the workpiece, and this can help me to remove the waste to a consistent depth. It's important that you try to turn your cylinder straight. Now that can be a little bit tricky on the lathe. I'll show you a way to true it up shortly, but take care to get it just as straight as you can with the turning tools in this roughing stage. The overall length of my pin will be somewhere between 16 and 18 inches. I want to begin about four or five inches from each end and create a taper that takes it down from the two inches to about one inch at the end in diameter. These measurements are all really a matter of personal preference, so you can customize it to fit your hands. Now, our rolling pin is pretty well roughed out, but unless you're pretty skilled on the lathe, the center is going to be a little bit lumpy and uneven. A good way to true it up is to just attach some really coarse sandpaper to a flat piece of wood with some staples. 
You can then hold that board on your rolling pin and that will sand it nice and flat. I happen to have access to a lathe with a duplication device that made it way easier to turn my pin straight. And even though you don't have one, I thought you may find it interesting to see how this machine works. After one pin is turned, I mount it to the front of the machine. And as I turn a crank, a finger moves along that profile on the lower pin, which controls the depth of cut on the blank above. You can rough out a blank in several passes, allowing the cutter to take about an eighth of an inch of material or so at a time. When that follower finger bottoms out on the pattern, the cutter will be prevented from going any deeper. And in this way, you can duplicate almost any profile that you want to turn. Whether you use a fancy duplicator or just a regular lathe, as I demonstrated, you'll eventually get your finished shape ready for finished sanding. Start with 120 grit, work your way up to 220 or 300. You can also use a handful of shavings to burnish the surface of the wood, as we showed you in a recent tip video. If you find some gaps in your knot design, take some glue and kind of press it in with your thumb, force it into those gaps. And then before it dries, do some more sanding. The dust will mix with the glue and that'll produce a filler. It isn't a perfect solution for large gaps, but it does a good job of hiding the small ones. Once it's sanded, you can coat it with your favorite food safe finish. Mineral oil is very popular. Boiled linseed oil is not a good idea because it's gonna turn rancid over time. Really, we could debate food safe finishes all day long, but we're not gonna do that. Instead, we trim off the ends and sand them to get rid of the marks that were left by the lathe spur, and we enjoy our Celtic knot rolling pin. This project was featured on Charles Neal's Woodworking Simplified online course. Charles teaches fine furniture making at cnwoodworking.com, so check it out. And be sure to also check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always full of woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com. Happy rolling.